This is San Diego News Daily. I'm Monica Dean. Let's get right into your top local stories. We are less than a week away from the election and more than half a million San Diego voters have already submitted their ballots. 39 polling locations opened for early voting this past Saturday. We spoke with voters at a few of those locations and while everyone seemed to agree the stakes this year are especially high, emotions about everything were mixed. All of it makes a difference. I think hopefully with this vote that we get out, we're going to make everything better. That's what we're hoping. I really don't know what's going to happen. And so I'm just trying to remain even killed about the situation. My mom always says, don't get too up, don't get too low. It's a time to not be overjoyed, to wait and hope that good will happen and that good will come out of all of this. 200 more vote centers will open on Saturday. We have a voter guide for you at NBC7.com with everything you need to know, like where to drop off your ballot, what to do if you make a mistake, and key deadlines you won't want to miss. Just click on Decision 2024 right there in our trending bar. Is artificial intelligence artificially inflating San Diego's rent prices? Some community leaders think so. And as NBC7's Audra Stafford explains, they're calling on the San Diego City Council to take action. If you rent a home or apartment here in San Diego or you're looking for a place to rent, you know the prices are about as sky high as these buildings here behind me. And there are concerns that technology is driving them up even more. An annual survey by the Southern California Rental Housing Association found average rental prices in the county actually dropped year over year. But San Diegans are still paying a lot more than nearly every other area of the U.S. A large part of that is due to our housing shortage and the fact that a lot of people want to live here. But some local leaders and housing advocates say price fixing software is also to blame because the algorithms allow landlords to align their prices and avoid competition that would otherwise keep rents down. San Diego is too expensive for too many people. So this morning, they gathered outside City Hall to call for a citywide ordinance banning this type of software, which the CEO of Serving Seniors says is contributing to our homeless crisis. About one third of the folks on our street are now older adults. The data shows that many of those are there simply because they live on a fixed income and rent continues to go up. But isn't it wonderful having a view? Downey says most of the seniors they see live on $1,200 a month or less, often having just $300 to live on for all of their other expenses. So even small increases in rent can have big impacts. That's why they're joining the fight against price fixing software. The goal is to eventually bring the issue before the full city council. From downtown, I'm Audra Stafford, NBC7. The Justice Department, California Attorney General, and others have filed complaints against this type of price-fixing software. We are learning more about what may have caused that Frontier Airlines fright from San Diego to have this fiery landing here in Las Vegas. The NTSB says about 20 minutes before landing, the crew smelled burning rubber in the front of the plane and in the cockpit, and the pilots lost their display screens, radio, and transponders, so they had to rely on visual landmarks. Once they touched down, the landing gear burst into flames. Federal investigators are now looking into an electrical system malfunction and an issue with a cooling fan. Several passengers are now suing the airline, saying they were stranded inside the smoke-filled aircraft for nearly an hour. Meteorologist Brooke Martell joins us now with a look at your Wednesday forecast. Hi, Brooke. Hey, Monica, happy Wednesday. Taking a look at your daytime highs. We're right around those mid 60s again for the immediate coastline, closer to the low 70s for downtown. Meantime, trending up over the inland valleys. We have some mid 70s back in the mix there for today. Still technically below seasonal norms, upper 50s for Julian, so pretty chilly for the higher elevations. Low 60s for Pine Valley, mid 70s today for Borrego Springs. The temperatures you're seeing here today, they really do continue through the end of the week. Changes by the weekend, though. Thank you. Public transit in the North County is taking a step into the future. Why the next bus ride you could take could be better for the environment. And after two years of construction, students at Moore's High School can now enjoy the newest upgrades. We'll have that story for you coming up.
Decision 2024, NBC7 puts you at the center of election coverage. From right here at home, looking at the big issues on the ballot impacting you. Why should voters continue to bear the burden of fixing the city infrastructure? To Washington, D.C. and across the country with NBC News. Once every four years, the big one, the presidential election. Ballots are already being cast in many places. Decision 2024, local and national coverage of every race and every story. On NBC7, coverage you count on. This is San Diego News Daily. I'm Monica Dean. Welcome back. San Diego will receive more than $50 million from the state to help out with our homeless crisis. This is in, as industry leaders are gathering in Mission Bay for a conference on shared housing where multiple programs will be highlighted. The $50 million from the state could help with new pro programs and problems. Uh, the San Diego Shared Housing Collaborative, which is an effort to get people into existing homes, often has with others also in need of housing. The Franklin family never thought they'd be living in an apartment apartment in Vista, but thanks to a new program, they were able to get off the streets and into a place they now call home. When you're homeless, you can't go open a refrigerator door. You can't go in. <laughs> He's in the bathroom. You can't go. Oh my God, it's just emotional. It may be a one bedroom, but to us, it's a castle. Hmm. The Shared Housing Conference will be here through tomorrow. Industry leaders are here from all over the country. Students at Morris High School in Skyline are getting a brand new state of the art theater and performing arts center. Today was the grand opening. NBC 7's Nicole Gomez was there for the celebration. Well, it is a gorgeous theater. When you walk inside, you can just visualize all the future performances that will be held there. <laughs> The talented Moore's High School Orchestra made use of the acoustics in this morning's ceremony. The two-story performing arts center replaces aging portable classrooms and an auditorium from the 1960s. Construction started on the site back in 2022 and now it's complete with a brand new stage, LED lighting, an orchestra enclosure and a fly loft often used in professional theater settings. A new student services building was also built with a secure campus entry, a lobby and a student support space. The project also expanded the quad area and a new parking lot along 69th Street. Not only are the students thrilled, but the whole community too. Before it's been a lot of excitement. Um, the kids are very honored. Um, I remember when we had our student um, policy assembly. When they walked in, they were in awe. Like you saw their faces like light up. So they're super excited to have this um, new facility. Um, our community has already been reaching out to rent the facility. So they're also excited about it. Well, right now the school is also in the process of building an agricultural unit that will house chickens and gardens. That's expected to be complete by fall of next year. Reporting from Skyline, Nicole Gomez, NBC7. NBC7 meteorologist Brooke Martell will have a look at your weather forecast right after this. NBC7 yeah. and Telemundo 20. Weather coverage you count on. You count on accuracy. The winds are going to be increasing. You count on these experts. Take a look here at our future weather. In two languages. You count on innovative tech. You look at our first alert Doppler radar. From a team you depend on. Dry conditions to round out this week. You count on early warnings. The tornado warning for parts of East County. Because you know every second counts. It just kept getting worse and worse. This is first alert weather. This is coverage you count on. Only on NBC7 and Telemundo 20. Here's a look at your 10 day forecast. Mild conditions through the end of the week and we can see for Halloween we will be right around the upper 60s for those coastal communities. Low 70s for the inland valleys by the weekend though we're really cooling down back to the mid 60s near the coast. We'll have similar conditions for the inland valleys plus those rain chances. This will go for the entire county Saturday and Sunday but look how much we back off here with these mountain temperatures. We have 40s on Sunday and we can even be back to those low 70s for the desert region. Have a great day. Thank you Brooke. Public transportation is going green in a new way. The North County Transit District is adding hydrogen powered buses to its fleet. The district broke ground yesterday on a hydrogen fueling station in Oceanside. The first of these buses are expected to roll out in the coming weeks. The district wants hydrogen powered buses to represent about one quarter of the fleet next year and be zero emissions by the year 2040. More coverage account on at NBC7.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.